Hi, this is Kurt Papke coming to you from Tucson, Arizona. I've been a backpacking gear reviewer for about a dozen years or so now. Right next to me here is just a sample of some of the backpacks that I reviewed over the past years. In this short little video, I'm going to give you an idea of what it's like to be a backpacking gear reviewer. The good and the bad. My story begins in 2007 when I penned an owner review for BackpackGearTest.org, who I'll refer to as BGT throughout the rest of this video, for my Garmin GPS. You can see from my bio that I was about 12 years younger and 10 pounds lighter. In the following years, I reviewed almost 100 pieces of gear for BGT. Shelters, packs, clothing, cooking gear, and a lot of accessories. In 2014, I started my own YouTube channel initially for gear reviews that demonstrated usability and the gear in action that worked better in video than a website. But since then, my channel has diversified into many other areas, but all associated with making great hiking memories. So, I work in two worlds, BackpackGearTest.org and my independent YouTube channel. Let me start by explaining how BGT works, because that will illustrate a lot about gear reviews. The process begins when a test call goes out to all the BGT testers with a brief description of a new review series. You can decide which ones to apply to, often depending on what you're already testing and whether or not you find the gear interesting. Your application gives the person making the selection everything they need to decide whether you are in a good position to test the product. Selections are announced a week later, and shortly thereafter the gear is shipped by the manufacturer. Once you receive the product, the first step is what BGT calls an initial report, similar to what some people have come to know as an unboxing review. That includes things that can be measured, such as actual weight. Two months later, the tester files a field report with the goal of describing how well it works. The third and final report is filed four months after receipt of the item with more of an emphasis on reliability and resistance to wear. After the field report, the tester gets to keep the item to do with as they please. Use it, sell it, give it away, donate to Goodwill, or whatever. Let's cover a bit of the mechanics of the process. Test reports are formatted using straight HTML. I use CMonkey as a WYSIWYG editor, but many BGT testers use the BGT Report Writer app. Because the audience is international, all measurements have to be written up in imperial and metric units. Product photos are key to a good report. It's not easy to remember to take product photos while hiking and I feel a bit odd doing it when hiking with a group. A monitor, or editor, provides feedback on content and grammar to make sure the reviews look professional. Last but not least, the report is uploaded to the BGT website. Now, let's switch gears, so to speak, and discuss YouTube gear reviews. These are much less structured, since I do them all by my lonesome. First of all, getting gear to review happens either when a company reaches out to me, or sometimes I'll take the initiative. Just as with BGT, the product is shipped to my door. After using the product for a while, I have to decide what and how to present about it. My preference is a how to get the most out of this product type of review. Only a fraction of my videos are currently gear reviews, despite that being what got me into YouTube to begin with. Like many YouTubers, I've broadened my focus which now I could summarize with helping people get and keep the best memories from their wilderness experiences. This includes trail guides, trip planning and preparation, videography and photography. Video editing has a big learning curve and now that I've gotten pretty good at it, I like to help others with the process. It's easy to get sucked into making videos with more mass market appeal due to the lure of subscriber and viewer numbers. Backpacking gear is really a very small niche market. So what makes a good review? I think the best reviews stick to the facts and keep opinions to a minimum. This might sound a little confusing, but how I feel about the product while I'm using it is an important fact. Next, try to avoid projecting, or in other words, assuming you know how other people will react to the product. 
All you can know is how you reacted to it. Challenging and interesting locales really help make up a good review. For instance, I like to test gear while backpacking in the Grand Canyon. The extremes of weather between the rim and the river and the rocky terrain really stress hiking gear, and it makes for some pretty awesome backdrops when filming. Good photography and videography is crucial. A handheld smartphone is good enough for product shots, but for video and to get yourself into the picture, you need just a few more pieces of equipment. An inexpensive stick pick that attaches to a trekking pole is great for selfies and does a simple gimbal mount. If you are using a smartphone, you'll also need a clip that anchors your phone to it. The phone then just clips in. Positioning your phone below the pole and using the back camera is useful for low shots. Here I am walking up Hermit Creek in the Grand Canyon with a camera just a few inches off the ground. Filming in slow motion or time lapse gives these shots extra interest. Hold the phone above the pole and using the front or selfie camera on your phone allows you to get those walk and talk shots that you see in so many YouTube videos. In this case, I was reviewing the merino wool t-shirt I was wearing, so these can help with product shots too. A small lightweight tripod is essential. This is how you get the shots with you hiking through the terrain. They can also be used for product setup shots. If you are doing a video review, you will learn that getting good audio is the toughest part. Wind noise, distance to the camera, and the ability to speak coherently into the camera will all be challenges. I use a Zoom H1 recorder and a lavalier mic when trying to get good backcountry audio. If you are interested, I have a whole video on how that works. Lastly, let's chat a bit about the challenges of being a gear reviewer. If you let it, your gear reviews can take some of the fun out of hiking. Having a list of a half dozen pieces of gear you need to write up creates pressure to get out on the trail even if you don't feel like it. Next, you have to be constantly mindful when hiking to get good product shots, hopefully with nice backgrounds at all times. Even while making breakfast at 6 a.m. in the Grand Canyon when I was reviewing an alcohol stove. You can end up schlepping a piece of gear around for quite some time that you really don't like or doesn't work. Like this solar panel that provided zero charge for my iPhone despite riding along on the back of my pack all day long in sunny Arizona. Filming the gear really slows you down. You can end up hiking the same piece of trail three or more times, plus setting up your camera on a tripod to get hiking shots. I estimate I spend one hour of editing and voiceover for each minute of video I produce. This is very time consuming and requires expertise in editing software that not everyone is willing to learn. If you are interested in becoming a gear tester, I think the best way to get started is to write for BGT. It doesn't cost a thing, and it's easy to get started. Just see their How to Be a Tester page on their website. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if it was, please hit like or subscribe below on the bottom of the screen.